This is Arne Elofsson and Anne Kauko, and we will talk about our recent paper in uh, protein science about echoporin one folding. In our protein science paper, we have studied unusual folding of aquaporin one, and in particular, how helix three can rotate after it has been inserted into the membrane. Anni, what are the steps involved in membrane protein folding? Membrane protein folding is a two-stage process. First, uh, these hydrophobic helices are inserted one by one to the membrane, and then uh, these helices fold to, uh, together to a final structure. How this sounds quite straightforward. Is it always such a simple process. The folding step is very complicated and there can uh, take place a lot of changes even after the helices are inserted to membrane. Uh, there can happen changes in topology. Helices or even nearly half a protein can uh, And now there has been a lot of debate whether these changes spontaneously or whether they require specific machinery. Echo point one does not follow this standard two-step procedure of folding. How does it insert and folds? It is initially inserted as a folding intermediate and then during folding two of the helices are inserted and helix three rotates 180 degrees. On the other hand, uh, its close homologue, aquaporin 4, is following completely normal insertion rate. During folding of aquaporin 1, but not for aquaporin 4, which is a related protein, helix 3 has to be reverted in the membrane. So, what is unique about the sequence features close to helix 3 in aquaporin 1? That cannot be observed in hyperbolic We noticed from hydrophobicity curve that there is in fact an extra peak uh, just before helix 3. And there is just a low barrier between the, these two. What consequences do you think this extra peak has for hyperbolic 1 folding? Perhaps this extra peak could shift to the membrane instead of helix 3. And if this would happen, then helix 3 would be ready to reinsert to the membrane in correct orientation together with helix 4. Anni, you observe this uh, peak from a bioinformatical analysis. How did you proceed to show that this really could happen? In we confirmed experimentally that this preceding peak really can insert to the membrane and that there are several alternative inserting segments at this region. That barrier is relatively low and our suggested shift seems feasible. In our model, helix 3 would be the initiation of a larger rescaling process that would involve helix 2 and 4 also. However, this would mean that you would need to bring polar residues across the membrane. What, is this really energetically feasible? It need to be remembered that there is quite much protein in membrane. So that would be the height of obesity and make these sort of changes easier. Would these large scale rearrangement be possible without an external machinery? We believe that this shift would take place without specific machinery. And Do you think the mechanism seen in aquaporin 1 folding is applicable to other membrane proteins also? And I see our study as an example on how, what kind of mechanism these sort of large scale rearrangements could use. What would you like to study next? 
um, it would be interesting to know how the rest of the reaction can take place and whether that requires any specific machine. And in, in this field, it would, will be interesting to see how common it is that these radical reactions can take place spontaneously, because there exist such examples.